We welcome you live to Sweetwater High School. Tonight, Sweetwater hosting Stone Memorial here at King Barong Stadium. Here comes play fake toss. Ball's loose on the ground. Sweetwater is going to recover. Brennan Tutimez for Sweetwater. There's a snap. Osman dropping, looking to throw. Time to throw. Time to throw. Here comes the pressure from Webster. The ball's stripped. It's loose. Sweetwater is going to recover. Stripped by Webster. Recovered by Maddox Johnson. And they toss to Westfield to that side. Westfield's got some room across 35 to the 40, 45. Motion, handoff to Oquindo. Oquindo trying to find the corner. He's pursued and Cockerell coming in with a nice tackle. Straight drop, looking, looking. Here comes the pressure and he's going to be sacked. Ty Webster. There's a snap, quick throw to the outside, complete to Brennan Tutimez. Tutimez down inside the 45 to the 40, weaving his way down inside the 35 to the 30. Dragon defenders down inside the 30 to the 27-yard line. This is going to be a 36-yard field goal. Snap, hold, the kick is up, it's on the way, and it is bending in good. Quickly, handoff comes to Westfield. Westfield reverses field out across the 35 to the 40, across midfield, down to the 45 to the 40, run out of bounds. Slower. Play fake, looking to throw, fires to the outside, single coverage, looking for Chris Offer, complete as he outstretches his arms and reels it in. Looking to add to their total. Here comes a toss to Westfield. Westfield's going to have the first down. He's going to have the touchdown. Touchdown, Wildcats. Braden Westfield. Snap, hold, kick is up, and it is down the pipe. Good. Dacus takes a snap, hands off to Dalton. Dalton going to push his way into the end zone. Up the middle, touchdown. Wildcats, Luke Dalton. Sweetwater falls the one-on-one on the season. They lose tonight here at home to Stone Memorial, the final. Stone Memorial Panthers, 40. Sweetwater Wildcats, 16. Let's take a look at our final game stats. Alan Richardson, our stat man, uh, done a great job for us. Now, he admittedly told me when he handed me this, he said, now, look, I, I may have missed uh, penalty, getting some penalties, man. he said, especially when there was uh, penalties on both teams and they were offsetting and trying to keep up with everything that's going on. I mean, so, sometimes there were three penalties on the play. Yeah. yeah. Couple on this side, one on that side, one de- dead ball, live ball, trying to keep up with all that stuff. So we don't know sure if we exactly got the total. We know it's a bunch. But uh, here we'll go with uh, Stone Memorial's numbers first. They had 19 first downs in the game. They ran the ball 27 times for 268 yards rushing. 9 for 17 passing, 89 yards, had four touchdowns through the air, uh, fumbled the ball away twice. They had eight penalties for 58 yards. Let's go ahead and tack another two in there somewhere because it's – Surely, <laughs> surely. See, they were two for nine on third down. They did not have to go for it on fourth down. Uh, for Sweetwater, they had 11 first downs in the game. They ran the ball 37 times for 150 yards, eight for 14 passing, 72 yards. They threw an interception, and they lost a fumble. A total of four turnovers in the game. Uh, so we've had 13 penalties for 105 yards. You might throw a couple there, extra two. Uh, so there was two for 11 on third down. Uh, that's not that's a tough stat. 0 for 1 on fourth down. Uh, of course, they uh, made the 36-yard field goal. Brennan Tutti Mez. Let's take a look at some leaders in the ball game uh, for uh, Stone Memorial. Uh, let's see their leading rusher. Uh, would have been uh, number 34. Get my roster back out here. 34 Maddox uh, Oquindo. He had the 73 yard touchdown run. He had 102 yards rushing. Uh, then you had, uh, let's see, Bear Eldridge, I believe, five carries, 56 yards. That's the name of few passing. Their quarterback, uh, number 12, Nick Osmond. 9 for 16, passing 89 yards, four touchdowns, leading receiver. Get this switch here for me. Uh, Bear Eldridge, four receptions, 49 yards, two touchdowns. And then you had a Houston Woody, uh, four receptions, 27 yards, and two touchdowns. Leaders for Sweetwater, uh, rushing. Uh, Braden Westfield, 15 carries, 67 yards, and a touchdown. He also lost a fumble. Uh, you had Kai Carrell, nine carries, 28 yards. Uh, and Javon Melton, three carries, 22 yards. Also coming in there uh, late in the game for Sweetwater, you had Luke Dalton, who had three carries, 18 yards, and a touchdown. Passing for Sweetwater, you had Slover, 
eight for 12, 72 yards and threw an interception. Then you had Dacus, 0 for 1 on passing and then receiving, leading receivers. Uh, Chris Alford, he had four receptions, 39 yards. And then Brennan Tutti may has three receptions, 32 yards, to name a few leaders. Uh, anything uh, defense-wise standing out for you tackling one? Uh, defensively, Keith Allen Gentry, uh, six tackles. Javon Melton, uh, five. Yeah, Ty Webster had the sack strip, creating the fumble. Uh, that was recovered by Maddox Johnson and uh, Tamar Upton. Leading the backfield there, deep at the backfield, and tackling performance. There's our final game stats. Alan Richardson, our stat man, doing a good job for us tonight. Ready for our Domino's player of the game. And sometimes in games, you have to pick out things and uh, have some discussions. It's not always a huge stat line, is what you're saying. You got to yeah. look for the little, the little things. Who contributed uh, in different areas? There was one guy that stood out to me uh, throughout the game. Uh, just playing really hard, doing the, doing the little things, and had a, a couple of really big plays. He had a, a strip on the quarterback, strip got in the backfield, yep. stri strip sack, and led to a uh, takeaway for the Swiggler defense. And then he had another sack later, just playing hard, had his motor run the whole game. Tonight we're going to select Ty Webster as our Domino's player of the game. Ty Webster, part of that offensive line, which you don't get any stats for the O-line, yep. but you look at what the running game did, and, and especially later in the game when it really got rolling, uh, being productive, so he's obviously in on that as well. Put that together with his defensive performance, and it's a congratulations to Ty Webster. Now joined by the head coach of the Wildcats, Caleb Slover, here on the Wildcat Wrap-Up Show, brought to you by Jackie Jones Ford. And coach, uh, sloppy ball game. There's no other way to describe it. There was laundry everywhere most of the night. Yeah, you know, we just talked to our kids all week about, you know, the, the laundry that we had last week, and uh, you know, couldn't go out and continue to commit those kind of penalties, but it just seemed like every time that we got something going, there was a flag that brought it back, and uh, you know, then we had some some penalties that we'll correct on Monday. Yep. But, uh, you know, it just seemed like every time we got something going, something bad was going to go against us, and uh, you know, for some reason, I, and I don't know if it was the heat or having to change practice or whatever, but I, I don't think our kids just came out with a fire uh, mm -hmm. that they had last week. They were just kind of glass-eyed. Um, we've had some guys that's been sick over the last week or so, but, uh, you know, we can't make an excuse for it. we got to come out and be ready to play. That's, that falls back on me. Sweetwater on the road next week at Teleco. Both teams coming off a loss this week. Both teams will be 1-1 one and one as Sweetwater gets the win. They'll be Monroe County champions. Uh, so that's a big game for Sweetwater to get back on track next week over there in Teleco. We'll have the broadcast for you if you can't make it. Thank you so much for watching SHS TV. If you enjoyed this video, give us a like. Be sure to subscribe and help support our channel by turning on notifications so you're the first to know when we post a new video.